what we're going to be discussing today is Coulomb's law. Now let's imagine that we have a couple of electrons, we can see that they're negative and they're separated by a distance of one meter. Now what would happen to those two electrons? From high school physics, we know that two electrons are going to repel. So that means that both of these electrons are going to experience repulsive forces. Now that's, this means that this electron here is going to experience a force to the right, then the other one here is going to experience a force to the left. Let's just say that this force is called F, like so, they're both the same by Newton's third law. Now, the question is, can we guess an equation for the magnitude of this force? What would this force depend on? Well, we know that it should depend on the amount of charge that we have in our system. For instance, if this guy over here was 100 coulombs, we expect this force to be a lot larger. If this one over here was, let's say, 100 millicoulombs, we'd probably expect the force to be a little bit smaller. So the magnitude of those two charges is really important. In this case, we're just looking at electrons. However, uh, in a more general case, let's say that the force is going to equal the product of the two charges. So one of them is Q, and let's say that the other one is lowercase q. And it's divided by a few constants. We have 4 pi in there, which is a constant. We also have epsilon 0, which is the permittivity of free space. Now, very, very interestingly, the um, relationship with the distance is that the force is inversely proportional to the distance squared. This is really, really important. Please don't forget that square in, um, in an exam situation or whenever you are doing calculations. So this means that the force F is actually inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Very, very similar to the way the gravitational force behaves. Now this means this force falls rapidly in magnitude as the distance is increased from the source. And this over here is Coulomb's law. Once again, Q is the magnitude of one of the one of the charges, lowercase q is the magnitude of the other charge, 4 pi is just a constant. Epsilon naught is also just a constant, which is just the permittivity of free space, and R squared is the separation between the two charges. Now let's actually calculate the uh, the force in this case. If we had two electrons which are one meter apart, which by the way is a gigantic distance for uh, for two electrons. So in order to calculate this force, um, I'm just going to essentially substitute into this equation. We know that the charge of an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. And because both of these particles are electrons, I'm going to square that number like so. I'm going to divide by 4 pi. Now the value of this constant epsilon naught is actually 8.85 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 12. This is given in your formula booklet and you don't need to uh, remember this for the exam. The distance here is uh, just one meter, so in this case this is just essentially uh, multiplied by one because one squared is equal to one. And if we input this into our scientific calculators, we are going to get a value of approximately 2.3 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 28 newtons. So if we have two electrons which are a meter apart, they're going to experience a force of 2.3 times 10 to the power of minus 28 newton. Mind you, this may seem as a tiny, tiny force. However, we have to remember that the mass of an electron is actually incredibly small so even this tiny force will produce 
potentially a substantial acceleration and we could even calculate that. Now let's compare this with a another force acting on this on on this system namely the gravitational force okay so we know that those two electrons are going to repel because of this electric force however there's also going to be a force of attraction because of the gravitational force in other words there's going to be an arrow, another arrow over here let's draw this one in light blue which is going to be acting in this direction now the question is how big do we need to draw that arrow let's call that gravitational force f g in other words how does it compare to the electric force well let's calculate the gravitational force for the same system so the formula for the gravitational force let's call that f g this is equal to minus g m m divided by r squared as we said it's a very very similar formula so let's input the Let's do exactly the same calculation for the gravitational force and we remember that the value of the gravitational constant g is 6.67 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 11 because both of the particles above are electrons we're going to type in the mass of an electron 9.11 times 10 to the power of minus 31 kilograms and we're going to square that number we're going to divide that by the distance squared which in this case is just one meter so that's just just one and if we input that into a scientific calculator we're going to get a very very tiny number which is about 5.5 times 10 to the power of minus 71 newtons now have a look at that the electrical force is so much stronger than the gravitational force is absolutely fascinating in fact even if i was to just to take the ratio of the two forces so let's say i just take the electric force and i divide that by the gravitational force i am in this particular case this will be 2.3 divided by 10 to the power of minus 28 divided by 5.5 times 10 to the power of minus 71 if i take the ratio this is going to give me a humongous number of approximately 4.2 times 10 to the power of 42 this is a humongous difference which just shows us how incredibly strong the electrical force is and how incredibly weak in comparison the gravitational force is. In fact, if I was to draw these vectors to scale, well, that really is impossible because I'm going to have to draw this gravitational force vector uh, incredibly, being incredibly small. Okay, folks, so just to recap, what we've done in this video is we've introduced Coulomb's law, F is equal to QQ divided by 4 pi epsilon naught R squared. We've um, applied this to an example of two electrons, which are a meter apart. Then we've compared it to the gravitational force, and we've deduced that the electric force is so much stronger. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider subscribing. And if there are any questions, as always, please feel free to drop a comment down below.